Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for tonight's webinar, Modern Mushroom uh, Medicine. My name is Sara. I'm a nutritional consultant for Choices Market at North Vancouver location. Uh, before I introduce our guest speaker for tonight, I will go through a few housekeeping items and uh, then we'll start the webinar. Um, for those that uh, attending this webinar, you are eligible to receive a coupon uh, that we call it nutrition box. It's look like that. Uh, this coupon is $10 off when you purchase um, $50 or more uh, at the store. And this will be mailed to you. So at the end of this webinar, you will receive a survey link. So you just need to fill out your uh, mailing address and you will receive your coupon approximately uh, one month after this webinar. And if you have any nutrition question, you can call or visit um, your local choices market and uh, talk to one of our nutritionist uh, in a store. Or email us at nutrition at choicesmarkets.com. If you have any question during a webinar, you can type your question um, on, in, in your YouTube uh, that to in order to type your question, you need to log into your YouTube account and uh, type your question. And if you don't have, you can create uh, your YouTube account. And uh, something else that I want to announce is uh, this Saturday is our uh, store anniversary in North Vancouver location and all items are 10% off. So it's a good time to come and even or those that are on sale. Uh, so now I'm going to in introduce our guest speaker, uh, Yaro, Yaro Willard. Uh, he's a second generation uh, clinical herbalist, also known as the Herbal uh, Jedi. He's the co-founder, formulator of Harmonic Arts. I love those products, Harmonic Arts. Uh, director of White Rose College of Herbal Medicine and an organizer of the Canadian Herb Conference. He is an influential innovator and international speaker who delivers original and engaging content, focused on reclaiming health and deepening connection with the natural world. Yarrow has formulated a number of popular herbal products, created online courses, and has one of the top ranking plant medicine education channels on YouTube. Uh, welcome, Yarrow. So now I hand it over to you. Thank you. Thanks for the warm welcome. Very glad to be here. Uh, I love coming to Choices in person, and yet here we are in the digital world because that is where we're at these days. So really happy to be here as a host of the Modern Mushroom Medicine and to really dive deep into what are functional mushrooms, how do they work, uh, what are some of the top mushrooms, what is the difference between mycelium and fruiting bodies, what are some of the ways we can take them, and of course, the most important, what are the best and top health benefits of working with mushrooms? Now, just to, to begin with, I want to say that species who have aligned with mushrooms in the past have been some of the most successful species on this planet. And I'm talking about the trees, I'm talking about insects, I'm talking about different animals and plants in general that have aligned with the fungal, the what we call the wood wide web. This is considered the immune system of our planet. Um, by many experts. Between bacteria and fungi, they make up most of life on planet Earth. And fungi are up to 25% of this planet's 
life. So this is a huge topic, huge area. What we're talking about today is going to be the top medicinal mushrooms. So these are the ennobled species, so to speak, of the fungal kingdom. And those are things like reishi, chaga, turkey tail. The one behind me is turkey tail, lion's mane, cordyceps. Those are the ones we're going to talk about. I've got a little PowerPoint presentation. Please ask questions if you want to learn anything about mushrooms. If you have things that are like burning in your mind, you want to ask a uh, a fun guy like myself about, well, that's what I'm here for is to edutain and deepen the connection to this medicine. Like I said, this is one of my favorite medicines, something that I feel very strongly is the future of really uh, bio biological response modifiers. And what that is, is things that help us respond and modify our capacity to adapt to the modern world as we change, as our planet changes. I mean, when I was a kid, we didn't have computers. We didn't have internet. All that has changed just drastically. And we are radically upgrading uh, the operating system of human consciousness every year. And so with that comes a lot of challenges. As, as many of you have probably been trapped in your homes now for over a year, maybe two, um, feeling like you might be one of 50 shades of going crazy. <laughs> some of these mushrooms are some of the best allies to really support overall health and adaptogenic qualities to make you the adaptogen to the changing circumstance of the world. All right, so I'm going to share my screen and Big thumbs up if you can see this. Now, I can't see your comments, but our host is going to ask and share. One thing I'll ask you to just type into the YouTube chat as we get going is like, where are you coming from? And um, what's your favorite mushroom? Is there, or or just something about what are you drinking? What are your, what's your favorite tea? How, what do you like about herbal medicine? Just chat in and fill up that chat box, get to know each other. That's a place where you guys can communicate. All right. But let's get started. So the webinar is starting soon. Drum roll. Brrrm. Here we go. Um, Yarrow Willard, who is this guy? This guy is a second generation herbalist. I, my father is Dr. Terry Willard. You may know of the Wild Rose Detox. This is a cleanse, one of the, probably the, the most popular cleanse in North America, really. And um, so I grew up in this this sort of family of learning about plant medicine, going on herb walks, um, studying mushrooms is something my father was very big into. He's written 13 books, president of the Canadian Herbalist Association for a while. And so I just kind of grew up around this stuff. And about 20 years ago, well, actually it's more like 18, I moved to the West Coast on Vancouver Island, which is where we started Harmonic Arts. And Harmonic Arts is based in Cumberland. We're a small little mountain town on Vancouver Island, inspired by nature to really craft up a connection to plant medicine through bringing people, being a bridge, what I call a medicine bridge for plant medicine and access to good quality herbs. So we do all kinds of herbs and spices, elixirs, tinctures, mushrooms, many fine products that are choices. And, and just as a quick, I'll, I'll mention it again at the end, but um, with this webinar, and with this kind of week going on, all, a lot of our products are about 25% off right now, which is which means if there's anything that during what we talk about you're really interested in, remember that it's really good time to buy it at Choices because you've got a deep discount. Um, they've been really generous. We've been really generous to try and um, offer up the best um, possible discount to really support you in trying out some of these mushrooms. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna talk about the five top mushrooms. Now, just before we get to the five top mushrooms, I will mention that the fungal kingdom is massive. There are over 1.5 million species in the fungal kingdom. Of that, we've cataloged um, probably a, a few hundred thousand. And of ones that we consider medicinal mushrooms, we've cataloged around 280 to 300. So we're really distilling it down to the top medicinal mushrooms. Mushrooms are the great alchemists of this planet. They, well, actually plants are the great alchemists too, but mushrooms really are, are the, the real bio um, modifiers that, that change chemistry. They eat um, everything and they deconstruct all the chemical compounds, all the bonds, break them apart and build up some of the most advanced chemistry on the planet. In these top five mushrooms, there are two groups of major compounds that we're gonna talk about. And those are polysaccharides, and triterpenes. Now there are also polyphenols, which are becoming a really important 
part to look at. And within these groups, there are a variety of different isolated compounds that we're starting to consider some of their active compounds. But if you ask a herbalist, it's the whole herb, nothing but the herb, so help your herbalist. If you have to ask a mycologist or a mushroom enthusiast like myself, it's the whole mushroom. And we wanna, we can work with extracts. And that's what I like to work with is mushroom extracts um, because these are full spectrum extracts that have all of the intact polysaccharides and triterpenes. And the reason is, is that those give you all the active compounds in a biologically available and digestible form. We can't just eat reishi or chaga or turkey tail. We can eat lion's mane and you can kind of chew on cordyceps. Um, actually lion's mane is considered a food and but you want to cook it. All mushrooms you want to cook. These mushrooms in particular, you usually make into a tea or what's called a decoction. So that's a double, double boil and trouble method of brewing up mushrooms. Now this is a little bit labor intensive to make a strong mushroom brew, but you can do that. You can work with your wild polypores, things like your red belts, your tinder conch, your artist conch, your Ganoderma um, organensis, which is our West Coast reishi, which happens to be growing all through, uh, well, I know a bunch of places in Vancouver where actually we see reishi, but we see it up into Pemberton and Squamish and Whistler and all through the West Coast forests into the interior. I've seen reishi there. So it's abundant and actually just a little, little gem right now, this is the reishi season. So if you're out there hunting, find some old Western hemlock, big old trees in a forest like that, that's where you might find some of these beautiful reishi mushrooms that are growing right now. And just to, as a note to that, and we're going to talk about reishi first, I think I'll just jump to reishi slide. Reishi is the most prominent and most potent medicinal mushroom that we know of. It is the queen or the the, the, the royal, royal goddess um, of the mushroom kingdom. It's been studied for more than 4,000 years. It's been considered and written down in written literature for over 2,000 years. Throughout Asia, this was the, the prominent mushroom that the emperor would consume. And um, actually in the, the Forbidden City, there's a big golden throne with a with a big reishi on the top of it, where the emperor would sit. It was that prominent that they, they put it in. And when I was in China, which was um, in 2019, we saw so many statues immortalizing the ancient wise people holding a reishi mushroom, many of the, the kind of grand masters. So the Buddhists use this and the aristocracy considered it a longevity tonic. So we consider this to be a mushroom of high vitality, one that in Chinese medicine is considered a shen tonic. And what is shen? Well, there's something they have called three treasures. And that is your three things that you want to protect in life, to build out, to be the strongest, most vital you can. And, and Chinese medicine is a holistic system that is looking at multiple levels and kind of building it all together. But Chinese tonic herbalism particularly considers these three treasures to be the most important things to safeguard and build. And those are qi, which is energy. You get that from your food. Moving your body is using qi. That is your vitality and blood that is moving through you. Then there is something called jing. And jing is the other treasure that is really your, um, we'll consider it like the, like the energizer bunny with the batteries on his back. It is your energy centers that is your pre-ancestral chi, what you came into life with. And mushrooms like cordyceps really enhance your jing, whereas shin is the spirit you emit. It's not really an aura, but it's kind of like that. It could be catalyzed into the energy field that you come in. So when you walk into a room, it's your shin that shines brightly and, and or not, or dims down. Uh, and so one of the main fables around reishi was to really enhance the shin, to build the spirit, to give the person a, a vital glow. And so that may not be scientific or validated through that, but we can see in the literature, when we look at the polysaccharides and the triterpene profile, the ganodermic acids that are in reishi, that they strengthen and enhance the body's ability to adapt to different environments. There also, there's some polyphenols in there that are quite antioxidant. And so we see reishi really protecting the cardiovascular system, uh, helping to calm down inflammation throughout the body and giving a really grounded sense to the person. So 
I like to think of this as meditation in a bottle, in a way. It is a grounding mushroom. Now, ones like lion's mane, people are getting really excited about for as a nerve tonic, as a brain tonic. But I think of reishi as almost a better mushroom for the modern age because it's lowering anxiety and calming down um, the, the disassociatedness that we are all experiencing. And, it, and what I mean by that is, I don't know if you have one of these, a pocket God. Yeah, I call it a pocket God. You might call it a cell phone or whatever name you want to give it. You're a little God in your pocket. And why I call it that is because we worship our pocket gods as a society. I mean, at least when I take a poll of people and I think of how much time we spend on our screens, well, that is a state of disassociated environment. You are actually stepping out of your body to experience that reality. So, yeah, so what I'm saying is that it's really important to have these Shen tonics, to have these spirit tonics. And one of the best Shen tonics you can do is just the practice of what's called forest bathing. And that is walking through the forest and just in a calm and meditative state, just, just deepening your groundedness with the planet you live on. And, and not in like trying to run through the forest and jog in a way to get more exercise. It's about um, just bathing in the moment, right? Not bathing, like taking your clothes off and having a bath, but bathing in the moment, just basking almost. And so forest bathing is a great one. Reishi grows in the forest around here. So you get a double whammy, just even connecting with reishi forest. And if you don't find reishi, when you're in a reishi forest, remember that the fruiting body is only the the outer expression of the reproductive organs of the mushroom. The actual underground organism is the true organism. So you are walking on reishi, even if you're not seeing the mushroom, it's all around you in the mycelium. So you were connecting in at some level with that type of forest. And another thing that's really interesting about that is almost every temperate forest and tropical forest on this planet that has a good amount of rain and produces these polypores, they have some form of Ganoderma species. And Ganoderma lucidium is the traditional red reishi that we have, that all the fables and fame is about and all the studies have been done on. Uh, but just know that this reishi, this there's like a hundred or more, this probably there's definitely over a hundred species of reishi. Even in Asia, there's I think 75 species of reishi in Asia. Here on the West Coast, we've got two different species, maybe three different species, although um, when I look at the Ganoderma aplanatums, I'm not sure if they're keyed out properly because there are two different types, very distinct, these large ones and these small types. So there's a lot of different species of reishi and you can use a lot of these similarly in your West Coast forest as you would the actual mushrooms um, that we're going to talk about tonight, about this reishi, although not as much has been studied on those. And this is the one where literally hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent in clinical trials, in scientific labs, in universities, studying and writing papers on reishi. The most well-studied natural product on the planet is this mushroom here. And most of that work is done in, in China and in Asia. A lot of that work though is also done, was done in Russia and in Germany. There's a ton of studies. Japan did huge amounts of work on reishi. When I was at a university in China, at the Hung Sao University, these guys get $10 million a year just to study mushrooms, this one university. So they take it really seriously in that part of the world. They are the people who the, the kind of, Chinese medicine really brought medicinal mushrooms to the planet. And they are sort of the, the forerunners, the forerunners of, of this type of knowledge and really bringing more of this knowledge to the world. So one of the things we'll discuss tonight is why China, what's the difference between American grown mushrooms versus Chinese grown mushrooms? Are they all mushrooms? Some of them are what we call mogs, which are mycelium on grain. They are not actually mushrooms. They are the mycelium on a grain mat very different from a mushroom. Mushroom is the fruiting body of the mycelium. You can grow, I think, 10 times as much mog as you can fruiting body for the same amount of energy. So the fruiting bodies tend to be more prized because they are more valuable and they take a lot more work. And the profile is quite different. So I will talk a bit more about that. The profile of the the fruiting bodies has much more advanced chemistry than the mogs do. So you end up getting, when you work with a true fruiting body extract, you end up getting all those triterpenes. There's over 120 triterpenes in this one mushroom alone uh, that 
are not found in the um, mycelium on grain. And you also get a lot of, you do get a lot of branch polysaccharides and a lot of poly, um, of the beta glucans in the mycelium on grain, but you get a wider diversity of them in the fruity bodies. And what much of the scientific literature talks about is how actually a wider spectrum of polysaccharides becomes more adaptogenic than just a single polysaccharide extract. So with the case of mushrooms like turkey tail, uh, there's been lots of polysaccharide extracts that are just extracting one single polysaccharide. They are not as good as working with a multiple um, spectrum, so full spectrum fruiting body extracts are what I've come to understand are the top choice for working with medicinal mushrooms. All right. And then with that, obviously you can get organic, high quality, no fillers, all that good stuff. So Reishi, let's get back to this mushroom. I'm gonna go one more slide over. Like I said, over studied for over 2000 years, um, Ling Shi, it is the kind of herb of spiritual potency is another byline in China. To protect the academic from their own brain is another byline in China. Essentially helping us stop circular movement you know, when you get that, like in an eddy, right? In an eddy, whether it's a circular thinking, so anxiety or a, um, attention deficit disorder can all be along these lines, or whether it's circular arguing over something, or whether it's just a perpetual movement in the body that's not going anywhere. This mushroom can really be helpful for grounding that in and giving us better capacity to, um, to be embodied. And what benefits does that have? Well, pretty much a panacea for a huge variety of health concerns. First one I'll mention is high blood pressure and cardiovascular health. There are some terpenes in this that are really good at emulsifying fats. This one calms down the blood pressure if there's high blood pressure and it strengthens the heart. The center of Reishi's energy from an energetic perspective is in the heart, right? Whereas lion's mane, head and gut, Reishi is a heart shen tonics. The house of spirit is in our heart. So a little more heart centered communication, um, but not just like on that metaphysical level, but on the physical level, literally calming down and strengthening the heart and helping to emulsify fats and build better, um, better quality of cholesterol in the blood, as well as lowering the blood pressure. That's the first one. The next one I'll say is in the lungs. Reishi has the capacity to calm down the lungs. This makes it really useful. And we put it into one of our allergy tinctures for as a bit of an antihistamine calming down allergens. So just reishi in general is going to work with both food and um, lung or pollen allergies or things like that. It's a great mushroom to be taking as part of our allergy response, but also for people who have asthma and things where there's, there's this constriction in the lungs. Reishi and cordyceps, we're going to talk about cordyceps in a bit, but cordyceps opens up and oxygenates the blood and it gets better capillary blood oxygenation in the lungs and reishi calms down the lungs. So great for anxiety, um, that way, like shallow breathing, uh, things like bronchial uh, catarrh to a degree and asthma or allergy response. The next place we want to think about reishi is for the mind, for calming down monkey mind. You know, when you get that monkey mind and you're too, living in the past, trying to project into the future, not really present, boom, reishi, the best mushroom of choice for this type of state. Next place I would look at for reishi is it has some antiviral properties. So this is a mushroom that can be really potent at curbing certain types of viruses. It's one we would put into a hepatitis virus blend. Um, it's got some good qualities. It's one I would use personally to protect my body. I do use it daily. I work with reishi uh, to protect my body from various pathogens in general. I do find that my preference is actually to use a five mushroom blend versus reishi on its own. So I use the blend of all five of these mushrooms. And seven out of 10 people, I would be suggesting working with a five mushroom blend, a multi mushroom as having a better effect because all of us need a bit of all of these different um, strengths of each one of these kind of health allies. So that's a bit about reishi. Mushroom of spiritual potency, really helpful in promoting longevity and vitality and not having creating oxidative damage in the body. Although chaga is a little more antioxidant than reishi, actually quite a bit more. Reishi is really good 
at really keeping our cells healthy and um, vibrant for longer. Hence, it was used as that longevity and vitality tonic all through Asia. All right, great mushroom, one of my favorites. And a little, little known fact, I actually have a daughter who's now 21 years old, quite a bit older than I realize. Oh my gosh, she's just grown up. And her name is Reishi. <laughs> so I've been into this mushroom for a little bit. Okay, next one is Chaga. Chaga is really taking the world by storm. Uh, it's become very popular in the last 15 years. Now it has over 500 years of history. It was used throughout Siberia through Finland. I was in Finland a few years ago and they all drink chaga tea, or at least a lot of the like biohackers and health people I was hanging out with, they drink chaga tea as a regular beverage. It's one of the favorites. Now all through Siberia, this is considered an adaptogen for the immune system and for the winter months. My favorite thing about chaga is the taste. It has a great flavor. It's very much almost got this uh, deep body that's not quite like a coffee. There is no caffeine in chaga, but it has that full body flavor. It really fills out. It also blends well with fats. It's got some saponin groups and things like that that emulsify fats really well. So I love using it as a base for elixirs and herbal lattes. Chaga is a great base or as a base for coffee. I'd actually make chaga tea and then brew coffee in it if I was going to go that route. I don't drink a lot of coffee, but I find that chaga is a great one to add into coffee. It goes really well with it. So does reishi, but chaga is great that way. Um, the other thing I would find about chaga that I love with not just the flavor, but it stabilizes blood sugar. So if you're someone who gets hypoglycemic or between meals, you really start to spin out. Chaga tea is a great option. And with our chaga um, powder, it's literally a concentrated tea. It's so easy to just take a little quarter teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of the chaga powder, stir it into hot water, and you've got yourself an instant chaga tea. Think of that as instant tea powder, literally. So with that being said, it can be really great in between meals. It's antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. So it's calming down inflammation in the butt, the, the gut and the, the butt too, <laughs> throughout the digestive system. And um, really just has an antioxidant capacity that stabilizes your blood sugars. So I find this to be a really good tea for me between meals sometimes. I tend to go on chaga binges, which means I'm not really a binge, but I will brew up the loose leaf chaga, which is really little chaga chunks, and I will drink it for a few weeks. Usually I can brew one batch of chaga three to four times. And I'll drink that throughout my winter months. I find that to be really great to go on like a little regular consistent chaga tea. And I might add in some reishi. I might add in some turkey tail. I might add a few other mushrooms in there. Um, but I find working with it for a period of time is really great. Something else I'll mention right now that is really clear to me about dosage with all of these mushrooms is that Think of them more as a food than a vitamin, right? Vitamins are kind of dead nutrients. Foods are kind of live nutrients. So nothing wrong with vitamins. Just know that if your body eats the fifth element, which is the vitality of the ingredient that you're putting into your body, that's part of what nourishes you, not just the macronutrients, not just the vitamins, not just the chemical compounds. Mushrooms have a really strong vitality. Most of these these um, adaptogenic mushrooms, but because they're more like a food to really get the health benefits. And this is true of a lot of supplements anyway, but particularly with mush mushrooms or with medicinal mushrooms, you really need to be consuming them for two to three weeks consistently to really start to get the bigger health benefits. You will get some protection from chaga as a antioxidant and immune protector. If you just have one cup of chaga tea, but if you drink chaga tea for a week or two, right as cold and flu season comes in, which is where we're at right now, or even just take medicinal mushrooms, reishi included, chaga, turkey tail, lion's mane. Um, throughout that time, you're going to strengthen your immune protection in a way that's actually going to help you from getting sick, even if people around you are sick. So I, I really believe in this concept of what I call resilience on a polluted planet. And this speaks to not just like, pollution, industrial waste and chemicals and all that kind of stuff. It also speaks to pathogenic pollutions like COVID, like um, flu viruses, like bacterial um, infections. These are um, part of this world and they are not going to 
totally go away. And there isn't, there's no way to um, totally uh, remove ourselves from the Petri dish. We are part of the Petri dish. So it serves us well to take what are called biological response modifiers or adaptogens to really protect our body. And, and this, this um, capacity, this piece of the polysaccharides is really what it is. The main polysaccharides in these mushrooms are, are immunomodulatory, which means that it's if your immune system is way up here, AKA autoimmune, you've got some kind of cascade of, of, of inflammation or, or a, a, your immune system is attacking itself things like Crohn's, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, fibromyalgia, autoimmune um, allergies, a lot of these things, these medicinal mushrooms help calm down that immune response. If you've got immune deficiency, you're getting sick all the time, you're weak and tired, you're not digesting your food properly, you don't have a good gut bacterial growth, mushrooms help boost up that part. So modulatory in the sense if you're over or under, they're bringing you to a better balanced state. Chaga in particular is rich in, um, in, in beta glucans. And also it's got a really good group of triterpenes. It concentrates out one called betulinic acid out of the bark of birch trees. This mushroom actually grows on birch. Hence why another reason I'm not a big fan of the mycelium on grain for chaga in particular, because here we don't have the right food source to actually give you the immunomodulating properties and the things like the betulinic acid, which are straight up concentrated out of the birch tree itself. So really a, a wild cultivated or wild forage chaga is best. Unfortunately, there are also some challenges around wild foragings and sustainability with this mushroom because everybody's getting on board. People love chaga. They love their chaga tea. It tastes great. It's become a new health like a um, real health thing that people are right into. And the problem with that is that um, it takes five to 15 years to grow a nice big chunk of chaga. So we are overdoing it in the harvest in some ways. What the, the chaga that we work with at Harmonic Arts is actually sustainably wild cultivated. And this is done in a way of actually kind of finding the right types of trees, wounding them a little bit and sprinkling chaga around the base so that that tree will grow up and grow out more chaga and then they can harvest it. So in a way it's almost force fruiting chaga out of a birch forest and creating a perfect environment to grow more. I think this is the only way forward. Actually, I do know one group in Finland that I went and visited, which was super cool. They were, they had built out another food forest and were doing a really unique strain of chaga. They were able to grow on dead birch. Chaga prefer, prefers living trees. And so it's really hard to cultivate other than doing this, this kind of wounding of the trees as they're alive and sprinkling it around. And that does work. That's what's done in uh, Siberia, Mongolia. That's where our chaga comes from, is that part of the world. We do sell chaga tea cut, which is here in North America, wild foraged. Um, but I just would say that uh, the ethics around working with too much chaga, it's just something to think about. And make sure if you are brewing wild chaga chunks, that you're brewing them up three to four to five times and really getting the most potency out of them. One more compound I want to mention about chaga that has it has in it is called superoxide dismutase. This is SOD for short. It is a free radical scavenger. You can Google SOD and you'll find out, you may find this, you may not, but this is what I found out is that your body actually produces this chemical compound to work with all kinds of of inflammation and damage in the body. So this is one of the most important uh, compounds for protecting our liver, our spleen, our heart, our, our major organ systems from oxidative damage. Chaga is through the roof in SOD and is considered the highest antioxidant of anything we've found on the ORAC scale, which is a way we measure antioxidants. So higher than green tea, matcha, spirulina, cacao, um, blueberry extract, uh, you, you name it, all these potent antioxidants, chaga is far more potent. So just to sum up chaga, here is a mushroom that is the king of mushrooms from the Northern folk medicine. And it's traditionally used really to address um, abnormal tissue growth, immune system health, and the intestinal issues. Now, I didn't mention too much about 
abnormal tissue growth, but that's just a way of saying tumor systems. If you Google this mushroom, you will see that, and you put in the word cancer or tumor and chaga, you'll get a hundreds of thousands of hits. A lot of people work with chaga for tumor systems. I don't think it's anywhere near as good as turkey tail, which is the one behind me. But in Russia, they have a pharmaceutical called B-fungin, which is a literally a cancer medication that is prescribed to people who are going through um, different types of therapies and working with cancer. That is straight up out of chaga. And I've seen a lot of people say they have a great success adding chaga into their repertoire. Now, I'm not saying this is a magic bullet. Cancer is not that kind of disease. There are lots of challenges, lots of individual unique things about it. It progresses very fast, but this might be one of the strategies you want to incorporate or add into the regime that you're working with. It's also very safe to work with alongside traditional conventional medications and medicines. So a lot of herbs are not, but turkey tail and chaga, which are the two I'm most um, excited about, the research has been done on for that, really, really have shown to shine that way. All right, next. So stabilizing blood sugars, antioxidant, intestinal support, um, immunomodulatory support, and helping with abnormal tissue growth. There's chaga. Now this mushroom, lion's mane, oh my gosh. Here's one that I will say has just taken the world even more by storm than chaga. It, you know, chaga was super popular. I'd say 15 years ago, it started to become popular, started to grow into success all through the last decade. A lot of people like chaga, but all of a sudden, like five, six years ago, a light bulb went on literally for lion's mane. And we saw from chaga being our most popular mushroom at Harmonic Arts to lion's mane far out competing it in terms of sales. And the reason why is that lion's mane has got some pretty promising research around its capacity to stimulate new nerve growth factors. And that's sort of like the behind the scenes. It's been used for neurodegenerative diseases. It's really seeing promise for things like Alzheimer's and um, dementia, but where much of the research has been done is on like fibromyalgia and um, all different kinds of things like, like this MS, multiple sclerosis, uh, various neurodegenerative diseases. This can help to strengthen the myelar sheath around the nerve cells and increase new nerve growth factors. So it's also gotten really hype in the modern day microdosing movement because all of a sudden, Here's a mushroom that is legal and can help stimulate better cross brain communication that doesn't get you high. Although I say that, and I think the child or that lion's mane does get you a little bit happy. I'll say this is a happy mushroom. In China, it is often used as a bit of an antidepressant. I think it's really good for those winter blues. But you need to consume at least a good teaspoon of it, which means like three to three grams. Of, cha of lion's mane really is like a little bit of a, a warm, sunny feeling, um, boosting up the happy in you, or at least it does that for me. I once, you know, one of our kind of party favors at one of our herb conferences, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of getting together in community and building uh, transformational experiences. Um, so that's something we do since 2013, we've been hosting and helping co-host the Vancouver Island Herb Conference for the last, um, yeah, since 2013 to 2019. And then we brought it online to, now it's an online Canadian Herb Conference that we collaborated with the Kootenai Herb Conference. Anyway, I'm gonna share more about that at the end of the webinar, just like how you might wanna check out this year's Canadian Herb Conference, cause it's awesome. But I was at a Herb Conference once, the Vancouver Island Herb Conference, and one of my um, students came up to me and he, he's like, okay, I just bought this whole jar of lions, this jar of lion's mane, and I really want us to do an experiment. Can we eat this whole jar of lion's mane today between the three of us? And I was like, okay, I guess you put me on the spot. I guess I'm going to consume a macro, macro dose of lion's mane. So between the three of us, we ate a jar of lion's mane. Now that's a little bit expensive, but I, I will say I was not concerned about um, the threshold of overdosing because these are very safe and it's easy to consume large volumes. They don't, you don't need large volumes, but it really lit us up. It really stimulates the nervous system and enhances cognitive function and allows for better um, focus, more flow state. So I think really what's underpinning to the whole new 
um, new edge uh, lion's mane movement where people are really seeing the benefits or whether really looking for the benefits of it is a bit of a biohacking thing where it's really about helping to enhance memory function and focus for, for being able to do some of the things we have to do in this world and to really stimulate new ways of thinking in cross-brain communication. Lion's mane, almost better than psychedelics as a micro or macro dose. <laughs> All right. Um, now I'm not prescribing those, by the way. I just uh, want to mention that this is a mushroom that is starting to really gain a lot of steam for its ability to sharpen our wits and help pre prevent placking in the brain. So just a good one. Okay. Nerves of steel and memory of a lion. This is also used by monks and warriors to build their concentration and focus. Heavily used in Japan, lion's mane actually was something that was used for many martial arts as a food, more than a supplement. It was made into like a lion's, traditional lion's mane soup um, with usually something like a goji berry and a resin from a peach tree. This is at least what I ate in China was a traditional lion's mane soup. Very tasty, um, but it was a way to stimulate uh, nerve memory patterns. So many of the, like, like in ninjutsu, this was a famous food to help keep the, the muscle memory of various patterns to be able to enhance almost a, a, a traditional, like I keep using the word biohack, but it almost is one of those things that like to help the nervous system retain the muscle memory. So something cool about it. Uh, I would just say that it's a very tasty mushroom. The lion's mane extract powder that we produce at Harmonic Arts is a seven to one extract. So you don't, you only need a quarter teaspoon, but you can take up to a full teaspoon um, and, and really see larger effects. I have noticed that people need to take more lion's mane than other mushrooms to get really strong therapeutic effects. I think this is more because it's a food. So it's one that I would suggest almost going over the dosage on the bottle. <laughs> That's just my personal opinion because the anecdotal evidence I've got from customers who have consumed a little larger volumes was uh, much more profound uh, in, in its capacity to enhance their neurobiology. Okay. Next mushroom is the one I got behind me, turkey tail. Now oh, this one- uh, Sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Can we go through a few questions just not to be confused with uh sure. yeah let's jump off of the screen share and i'm just going to jump um, back on to uh, just a few people ask about the dosage um like the yeah. one first when you started with ratio uh someone asked what dosage per day do you suggest great question yeah i mean so be just to keep in mind you can do larger doses than this but really a quarter teaspoon or one to two grams is what I suggest per day. I'm not a big, like the way I work with medicine is maybe different from the bottle sometimes. Most people, it'd be like one gram, two times a day. I tend to like to take my supplements and my things kind of once a day. So I'm more apt to take um, a half a gram of this and put it into my morning coffee or a gram and put it in my morning coffee and just do that once a day. That would be my suggestion for reishi. Lion's mane, I'm suggesting the two grams a day is a better dosage. But if you really want to deepen with these, one gram twice a day with the powders. If you're working with the tinctures, then you're wanting to take a um, two droppers full. And that's the equivalent of two milliliters of our mushroom tinctures. So you're working with them that way. That's how I would do two, two droppers full twice a day is what I would suggest with the tinctures. And one gram twice a day is what I'm suggesting with the powders, although you could go uh, as a bigger dose. And I'll give one more thing to that that I just want to touch in with dosage because I think it's really important and something that's forgotten about with dosage is that you are also highly intelligent, your body is. And so you'll know if you've overdone it or underdone it. And something to really tune your body to the vibrational frequency of the medicine you're taking is to do what's called an ethereal dose, which means to take a very tiny, tiny amount and just put it on the tip of your tongue and roll it around your mouth like a sommelier and just connect with the medicine that way. If you do this, the smaller the dose, the more acute your sensory perception has to become. Therefore, the deeper you actually start to connect with 
um, from that level, the medicine. So my suggestion for, for most dosage is to have an ethereal dose, a drop dose, or a tiny bit of the powder first, and then consume a full dose. All right. Great, thank you. And also another question, someone asked, uh, what do you suggest a therapeutic dosage of uh, chaga or turkey tail for cancer treatment? Yeah, so with, with you know, it's, it's your body, your choice. And don't forget that. Don't let somebody else be an expert. So don't just trust my dosing and don't just trust the internet's dosing either. But if it was my body, I would double or triple the dose if I had cancer. I mean, it's, it's my life here. And these mushrooms are safe. And the larger the amounts of the polysaccharides that you actually get into your body, the better um, to really show cancer prevention. So many of the studies on reishi and actually on turkey tail were done with like three to six gram dosage. Now with a concentrated extract, you can bring that down to one to two gram dosage, but I would still be doing I'd probably double the dose that's on the bottle. The bottle says one to two grams. I'd be doing two to four if, uh, if it was my body and my choice going through cancer treatment. Um, and especially turkey tail in particular is the one or chaga that I'd be looking at first off. Great, thank you. Okay, let's continue. Yeah. All right. Oh, I guess I, I didn't really stop the screen share. I just <laughs> stopped the slideshow. Okay, let's go here back to the presentation. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the mushroom that is most heavily studied when it comes to cancer treatment. That's turkey tail. This one in the 80s really became popularized throughout all through Asia. Um, it's just not as popular in North America, but in Asia, this is the cat's meow. <laughs> this mushroom has uh, been heavily studied. Another one, second most heavily studied mushroom on the planet, reishi being the first. Turkey tail, a lot of the research was done in Japan, but there's also a ton in China. They were able to isolate out two different polysaccharides in this mushroom, PSP and PSK. It's polysaccharide peptine and polysaccharide crestine. These two isolates have shown to increase the body's capacity to recover from radiation therapy and chemotherapy up to 400 times better recovery rate, which means they work really, 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 really well alongside conventional treatments. Now, they also seem to stimulate the immune response and capacity to identify cancer cells and to work towards eliminating them. So here's a mushroom that has a lot of promise. Now, there is, there, there's just a really challenging one because it's not a magic bullet. There is no such thing as a magic bullet. I really strongly, if you're working with that type of medicine or you're in that type of state, I highly recommend that it's also a tuning your energetic patterns of the way you associate with the planet. Now that seems sort of um, abstract, but it means that like, if you're doing something in your life that you don't like, or you're in a pattern that's not serving you or has not been, and you know that, one of the best medicines is to get out of that pattern and to shift it up. The best people who've had success are people who have gone and started to do their bucket list and do all the things that they always thought they couldn't do and they had put pressure on themselves. So I just highly recommend that you take a multifaceted approach to those kind of medicines. But turkey tail is not just for cancer. That's really what it's famous for. And it's actually prescribed now in Japan alongside traditional conventional um, treatments for cancer because it's so shows so much better success rate, not so much in North America, but still heavily used. And there's tons of research and tons of anecdotal evidence of people who have used this mushroom to support that. Another area though, that turkey tail really enhances the body is in increasing and supporting the breakdown of proper nutrition in the gut. Uh, it's a really good prebiotic. Chaga is a good prebiotic and reishi is a good prebiotic too, but turkey tail has a better, or not really a better, but it has a really good capacity to feed good microbiome health. And that is our true immune system. This is one of the areas that many of the mushrooms shine is in deep, deep immunity support through being prebiotics to help organize um, the, the probiotics and to help give them the right food, but also calm down inflammation in the gut. We have a society that has a pretty much standard issue inflamed gut diseases. 
And that comes along with the types of food that are available in our environment. Most of us don't have a great understanding of true nutrition. We also don't have access to high quality ingredients all the time around us. We go to lots of fast foods and restaurants and grocery stores that just don't have a ton of stuff. Now, Choices, of course, is the place to go to get quality ingredients for your body. But the fact of the matter is, even Choices and even everywhere, they still have like gluten-free donuts and soy bacon as alternatives to things that may not be good. So not not everything is great, Um, but you're going to get better quality, obviously, in a good quality health food store like that. And that's why you guys shop there. Just know that um, gut inflammation is really a modern disease based on the types of foods available in our environment. So anti-inflammatory things for our gut is really important. And turkey tail is one of those mushrooms that I'm just like really good for prebiotic. The other thing about turkey tail is it has some polyphenols that are antiviral. It has some terpene groups that are antiviral in this mushroom. So here's another one. Again, the terpene groups are only found in the fruiting bodies. So fruiting body, fruiting body, fruiting body, all the way as far as the best extracts that have the most potent ingredients. Many mogs or mycelium on grain will claim the same benefits as um, the fruiting body extracts, but that's really because the research is done on turkey tail and the general public is not always aware of the difference between a mycelium product and a fruiting body product. So just again, highly recommend that because here's where you get the terpene profile. Here's where you get the antiviral compounds. And here's where you get some of the like liver hepato protective compounds that turkey tail has. So this is another one I would add into a hepatitis C blend. It's also like the great digester of the forest. Turkey tail is a very um, almost for lack of better words, aggressive mycelium species that comes in and can eat almost any kind of wood. From a micro macro connection lens there, we can see how our liver is our processor, just like turkey tail is a processor in the forest. and has a really good ability to help strengthen the liver's capacity to process all kinds of toxins, hormonal load, and just junk chemistry that comes into our body. So just another good one for supporting the liver health. Hence why we put turkey tail into our golden milk. Now it's not anyone else's golden milk. We felt like we really wanted many of our herbal latte elixirs to be powered by mushrooms. And this is one of those mushrooms that works really well with the anti-inflammatory, gut protective, liver protective capacities of turmeric. And is just a good one to go along with that ashwagandha turmeric golden milk kind of herbal latte blend. So that's one. I would also highly recommend if you're into that kind of drink that whether you get ours or another company's, uh, you really start to add in these mushrooms and start to cater and build out your own herbal lattes. It's a lot of fun to build out your own drinks and preferences based on adding in different ingredients and not just do cold smoothies, but in the winter months here, do hot tonic teas and then add in superfood powders and add in fat and blend that all up in a blender and have a nice herbal latte. I just can't say how much over the years those have really just really made my day. (laughs) So, all right, especially for winters in Canada. So turkey tail is one of the most heavily researched mushrooms in the world. Like I mentioned, Uh, I kind of mentioned all this stuff used for immune and digestive imbalances. Um, And yeah, I can't say it on the slides, but that's where all the research is, is in um, cancer treatment. All right, Um, cordyceps. This one, is pretty awesome. This is a mushroom that has really um, been around for for thousands of years. So I think it's 1400 years of like been talked about in written literature. And originally it was um, yak herders in Northern, um, in the Himalayas in the high plateaus that notice all their yaks would be hunting around for these cordyceps mushrooms and then getting really frisky. Um, and so realizing that this was a libido And so people started taking cordyceps and found enhanced stamina, enhanced energy, better blood flow, more stress support and balancing and uh, a little more libido. So it's not like um, something that's going to make you horny, so to speak, but it's going to make you more embodied and more um, readily in your feeling body. So a lot of athletes work with cordyceps because it's enhancing to the cardiovascular system. It gives better blood oxygenation to the cells, and it really helps to 
open up the lungs to bring in more oxygen and calm down the adrenals to really allow us to be more balanced under stressful situations. This took the Olympics by storm. And I think it was 1984 when the Chinese swim team, I think it was 84, it's somewhere in there. The Chinese swim team broke a whack load of world records. And they're like, these little Chinese women, they gotta be on drugs. And it was not drugs, it was cordyceps. Heavy doses of cordyceps for their Olympic team had better lung capacity, better oxygenation to the muscles, less lactic acid buildup of the, the burn you get when you work out hard and just has that capacity. We, we have a number of, um, I've talked to a few stores, they have various football players, at least in Calgary, Calgary Stampeders, a bunch of them are on Harmonic Arts Cordyceps. I'm sure the same is true of many other high level athletes. Uh, they're taking this mushroom because it really enhances that capacity. So that's a bit about that mushroom. I, I like cordyceps. I really like it for altitude sickness or asthma or these kinds of things too, for bronchial. I like it for stressful situations. It's one I add into my day through the five mushroom blend. Um, I think it's, it's a good mushroom to help enhance our physiology. And if we are weak and tired or we are not up to our full capacity, cordyceps might be a mushroom to take regularly to kind of enhance especially to protect you from adrenal burnout. Something I will mention too, is that many women in the modern age are taking on, and it's like men too, but, but speaking to the women in the group, taking on way too much. Their bodies were built for a different level of capacity than this alpha female who's got two jobs, uh, two children, a husband that's like another job, and they're just trying to manage it all. I see a lot of women burn out because they're just firing at such high functioning. They're awesome, like super mamas, um, like high functioning people. But in like five, six years of doing that, maybe it's 10 years, maybe it's longer, they crash. Uh, men were built, and and I'm I'm all for equality, but men's body were, were built a little more to run on testosterone, which means that they can handle longer periods of time without food and um, would go on the hunt literally for days on straight up adrenal juices. Now, what's happening now is all people are literally on the hunt with straight up adrenal juices, drinking coffee a lot of the time. And so we see a huge epidemic of adrenal burnout happening. And it's particularly in this group of high functioning women that is it's more and more. So I just, as just a word of caution, don't do that to yourself. Make sure you take a nice hot bath every once in a while, get a good massage, go for some forest bathing, just nourish yourself, just pamper yourself a little bit and take adaptogens like cordyceps and rhodiola and ashwagandha um, and potentially Siberian ginseng or Eleuthero, but cortisol being one of the best ones for this type of thing. All right, how's my time? I think I'm, I'm running through my slides way slower than I thought I would because I'm just talking, talking, talking. All right, so adrenals, energy, endurance, enhancing. So I wanted to talk about fruiting bodies versus um, mycelium. I've already kind of covered that earlier in the, in the slide, but just know that when you purchase a harmonic arts fruiting body, you are getting, or our products, you're getting 100% fruiting bodies and we've got no fillers, no diluted, um, and really the best quality of medicinal compounds. Now, something that is potentially a place where we get a bit of flack for, or I get a bit of flack for, is I actually chose to work with a Chinese um, producer. And really, I was all into the American mushrooms for a long time. Um, but I found when eating them, my organic liptic testing of these grain spawn bags, which is what they grow in, in, in the US, they're not true fruiting bodies. They didn't have the flavor. That was the first thing I noticed was like, they all tasted exactly the same. So I highly recommend you open up your capsules. Does it just taste like wood? Or are you getting um, a really nice bouquet of the, the, the mushroom chemistry? Your body is wise. It can tell, it can read chemistry. So I noticed this right off the bat. And then I started digging into the research and I found out that pretty much fruiting bodies are the only thing that have been heavily researched and shown with this valid science to really be the best way to work with mushrooms. So I spent 10 years trying samples, testing out C of A's, getting into like looking at different mushrooms and different places they're grown, 
And our current supply, we work exclusively with organic mushrooms that are grown only on the best substrates that have been lab tested in some of the most advanced labs I've ever seen. You can actually watch some of our YouTube videos if you want on the herbal, she mentioned I'm the herbal Jedi, but it's actually herbal Jedi on YouTube. And um, I've got a series on mushrooms, uh, one of our playlists on our YouTube channel. Five of those videos are us touring mushroom farms, and you can actually see vertical transparency into the farms that we supply our fruiting bodies from. And like with reishi in particular, way up in the, in the high mountains on old green tea farms where they're using traditional wood under organic sitting, settings, similar to a ginseng shade cloth, very clean, very high quality. Our cordyceps are grown on the best substrate that produces the highest levels of cordycepine and andazine, which are the two chemicals you measure in cordyceps. You will notice that most companies don't measure these. We actually put those on the bottle because we feel that this is the active chemistry and should be recognized. Terpene groups in reishi, polyphenols in chaga. Anyway, um, so yeah highest quality mushroom extracts uh, with no fillers and no dilution. All right. So, oh, that's a little bit about our mushrooms. I guess I jumped slides. Um, and we also do a lot of third-party testing. So yes, China is a four-letter word almost. It's actually five letters, but we consider it a four-letter word here in North America sometimes because there's a lot of crap there. There's a lot of pollution. Uh, there's a lot of challenges there. And I saw the whole side of that industry and understand why we have chosen the best quality mushrooms on the planet because they also produce the highest quality. Nine, I think it's nine out of 10 reishi mushrooms that are grown on this planet are consumed inside of Asia. So they have about 18 to 20 grades of qualities of reishi mushroom. So they've just built out an entire infrastructure around producing these to the capacity where they have some of the best quality extracts. So I'm not against China. I just, I know they have to be really, really careful. I just want to mention that, um, that that is one of the things that I think is really important is to look for the best quality and not be so strictly biased to where that is, provided you can do the due diligence of third-party testing and you're not just taking people's word for it, which is something we can do. And so if, if you want from choices and you ask them, can we get a certificate of analysis, which is a fancy nutritional fact for the back end of supply chains. Well, that's something Harmonic Arts does for all of our products. Um, so yeah, you can get that for any of our ingredients. Okay, extraction methods. Um, I wanna just, yeah, I'm gonna spend, I'm gonna take about five minutes to go over the top. Something I wanted to just mention is that what I love about our powdered extracts is that they are entirely water soluble. So you can stick them into a smoothie, you can stick them into oatmeal, I put them in, yeah, my kids' oatmeal in the morning. They don't even know they're taking mushrooms. They just love their oatmeal, but they're a great way that way. Soup bases, my favorite way is to put them into hot chocolate or to make a tonic herbal latte. But I also, for those people who are allergic to health food stores, you know, the husband that sits in the car drinking his coffee from Tim Hortons while you go in and shop. Maybe that's not you, maybe that is you, but they're really responsive often if you put mushrooms in their coffee. And so many of these have a bit of an umami flavor. They're great in those kind of drinks. And they're just this, um, it's what's called a vacuum dehydrator and then a spray dryer uh, that really brings them into a powder. So they're dehydrated down from a soup, literally a mushroom soup, a liquid, dehydrated down at a lower atmospheric pressure and turned into a powder through a spray dryer. That makes them really water soluble and 100% guaranteed potency. We use a 12 to 1, 8, 9 to 1, 8 to 1 to 7 to 1 extract. Again, in dosage, we're recommending one gram. I'm suggesting up to two grams is really an ideal dose, uh, one to two times a day. All right, so how do I take them? Oh, I'm going to say mushrooms are good for our brain, gut, energy, stamina, immunity, adrenals, inflammation. Wait, go bang back to that. Ah, no, we'll wait for that. Our whole body, there's a bit of a panacea effect. Now, not each mushroom is good for each part. Cordyceps, more adrenal. Lion's mane, more brain and memory. Uh, gut health, more turkey tail and chaga and inflammation. Turkey tail, chaga, reishi. 
energy, more cordyceps, a little bit of reishi, immunity, all of them, although reishi, chaga, and turkey tail really shine that way. And yeah, basically they have a lot of support for biological response modification. So the human is the actual healer of their own tissues, not the things we put in us, but these give us uh, the wisdom of the more cellular intelligence to make better decisions from a biological perspective. Okay, so easy to use. We also do a lot of mushroom tinctures. Um, these are great. It's another great way to work with mushrooms. I find our tinctures are the most potent I've ever seen. I love when people taste them against other tinctures because I just, I feel really confident about how, how like high, high frequency, high potency these mushroom tinctures are. We also do elixirs. Every one of our elixirs contains a mushroom. These are really herbal lattes that are a very tasty way to consume mushrooms. This one, Elevate, has got lion's mane in it. Like I said, our golden milk has turkey tail. Our matcha mind has lion's mane. Our activate has reishi and chaga uh, in it. And, and then we have a five mushroom drinking chocolate, which is really, really awesome. And that one is all five. With these, I highly recommend you add in MCT or coconut or ghee or grass-fed butter, and you blend it up, or even cream if that's your thing, um, you blend it up with hot tea or hot water, and it's just really good. You can add sweeteners. We tend to do different from other companies. Most companies add a lot of sweetener into their blends. We don't. We think you should choose your own level of sweetness and your own amount of sweetener. That way you can consume higher volumes of the powder you can put more in it, make it more concentrated, and then tone down the sweetener if that's how you prefer your medicine and or go without sweetener. Okay, thanks for joining me. I just want to let you know that we have lots of tips and recipes on our website, so check us out. Also on Instagram, we do a pretty good job of sharing a ton of herbal content, uh, lots of recipes, lots of giveaways, and all that kind of thing. I also want to remind you that Right now, Choices has a 25%. That's a huge discount on all of these products, our mushroom products, our elixirs, um, all of that stuff. So if you're interested, this is the time to start to try them out. My recommendation as far as a mushroom powder is often the five mushroom blend. But if you want to work with an individual mushroom, I'm very clear that the best way to go forward, at least from my perspective, is to say I buy, I want to work with reishi to ground. I would take both a five mushroom and a reishi. And I take a quarter teaspoon of the five mushroom and a quarter teaspoon of the reishi. Therefore, I'm getting more reishi, but I'm also getting the benefits of all the other mushrooms. I would also say that you're good to do these for a good two to three weeks, like I mentioned before. Or what I often tell people is in the bottle, there's 45 grams. If you're taking a gram a day, that's 45 days. Cycle it through a full cycle before you take a break. You're going to get more benefits out of doing that. And then I would do two to three times a year, a cycle like that. If you want to take a little bigger dose and get into a gram and a half, and you do that over 30 days, it's another way to go. But I tend to do two to three cycles. And the last slide I have, and the last thing I wanted to mention was the Canadian Herb Conference. I, I, I sort of teased to this earlier, but if you want to deepen your connection to plant medicine, if you want to learn from some of the top experts on this planet, this is, at least in Canada, we also have an international panel and a bunch of international speakers. This is the place to come this year online, November 4th to the 7th. We have a really awesome group, about 40 different herbalists that are coming online to really share their knowledge around plant medicine. You can find out about, just even Google Canadian Herb Conference, but the website is herbconference.com. Or no, herb gathering. Yeah, herbconference.com. I can't believe nobody had herb conference when we got the website. We this is our second time doing this conference. It was really well received last year, uh, and a lot of people are really excited to be joining us in November. Okay, that's it for my slideshow. I'm going to stop my share, and I just want to say before I do, I really appreciate your time and want to thank you for joining us in this presentation. <laughs> So thank you so much. Uh, that was great. Uh, a lot of information. I, I learned myself a lot about different types of mushroom. Uh, so let's see what question they are asking. Um, oh, one question is about the sale. Uh, yes, as uh, we mentioned, is 25% off all harmonic arts. 
so it just started from today until uh, next Thursday. Our, usually Great. our sale is like weekly, for, uh, so it will end uh, the and Wednesday. I recommend you go in early because I've seen what happens in some of these sales and um, sometimes, you know, a bunch of people come in and you run out of a, a product. <laughs> so, yes. So, so I just recommend you, if you, if you are interested, you go in in the next couple of days in case, yeah, Thursday, there isn't any left. <laughs> um, okay. And also someone, oh, I said, can you type it into the chat, please, for uh, Herb Conference? Uh, Herbconference.com. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll just type it here. It's, uh, that, that's calm, right? Just make sure it's... Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm, great. And um, see if there's any other question. Uh, so, and they said that great information, thank you. And, and also I mentioned again that this Saturday is uh, North Vancouver Tourist Market anniversary and it's 10% off from all items in the store um, and even all on, on sale. Wow. So that we... oh, come on, Earth products, that's a pretty great discount. <laughs> you might yes. want to go to North Van. For... <laughs> yes. Uh, Probably going to be but... a zoo there, I'm sure. You're going to have a busy day. Uh, we will yes um okay uh, another question uh what is the ratio in the five mushroom blend yeah so we put all five mushrooms in equal ratio which means there's the same amount of reishi to chaga to turkey tail to lion's mane to cordyceps and because each one's a little different ratio it, it works out to be a nine to one extract so it works out to be a nine to one extract so that means for one gram you're consuming nine grams of fruiting body of mushrooms, um, but of five different ones, part of, yeah. Okay, thank you. And also someone asked, can you put them into baking? Oh yeah, I mean, my, my wife finds a really, the one thing that's also nice about them is they're stable with heat, right? So you can actually mm -hmm. bake with them or put them into soups, unlike things like peppermint and stuff that like volatilize or, things that denature um, and oxidize. Mushrooms are quite stable and quite safe that way. So my wife puts them into like our, our pie crusts. Um, she makes them into the kids' cookies sometimes. You just don't want to like overdo it. So it tastes like it's all mushroom, but it, they hide really well in, in, a, in a cookie kind of thing. So yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And I really like the one with chocolate, chocolate, five mushroom chocolate. That's Yeah. Easy. Yeah, I've even we've even just put the five mushroom drinking chocolate with the with the um, yeah mushrooms in it into various cooking or like chocolate brownies. We'll just take our mushroom powder, or mushroom chocolate, and um, make it into yeah food like that. Great. And uh, another question: uh, When would you recommend taking the blend or any of the mushroom? So I'm a big fan for myself of taking it in the morning. Um, reishi is calming down the mind. So you might take reishi in the evening. If you have insomnia, you may find it's a really good one that way. There's no caffeine, no stimulating effects that way. So none of them will keep you awake unless you like macro dose lion's mane. You might find like a really big dose of lion's mane is turning the brain on. So it's okay to take them in the evening or the morning, um, with food is often how they're consumed. Um, but things like chaga, I tend to take in between meals because it's really good for stabilizing the blood sugar. So um, I'm a big fan of like people finding their own regime. I really recommend that like, when do you normally take your supplements? Um, that's when you want to start to take your mushrooms. Yeah. All right. Okay. Great. Uh, also, I have a question myself. Um, you mentioned that like turkey tail is good for people to go through cancer or like chemotherapy. So is it good that when they go through chemotherapy, the same time get the turkey tail just to- Yeah, well, that's, that's what 
that's what's done in Japan. That's literally mm -hmm. how they work with it in Japan. And, and like, there are, there are a bunch of studies that have shown like up to 400 times better recovery rate from the chemo. So the chemo is really hard on the body. Um, right. Now the idea is the body is stronger than the, the cancer. And so the body survives and the cancer dies, but to help the body recover better, turkey tail can really enhance that. And so it's one of those mushrooms that is traditionally prescribed in that part of the world. Um, and again, don't take my two grains of dulse on it. Uh, it's very available information on um, PubMed or some of these scientific um, uh, like Google Scholar or various places where you will get scientific papers. There's lots of papers done on turkey tail around being used that way. So you can get many other sources to validate um, how to work with it. The thing I will mention is that it may not be something that your Western doctor is really familiar with. And commonly they're like, shut down all your supplements. That's what they're going to say because they don't want to have, well, it's liability issues or um, things that might interfere. Some of them might interfere, right? Some of the supplements people take, but in this case, here's one that um, has a lot of research and a lot of people have actually gone in and said they've shared this research with their doctor. So a lot of naturopaths are getting people onto mushrooms all through Europe. This is becoming a much more prominent practice to work with in these things. Okay, great. Thank you. Another question is, uh, what mushroom would you recommend for Benin tumors? Yeah, it's, I mean, reishi, I think right. in my mind, um, the reason, and I, I, I would say that chaga is going to help as well. But reishi to me is, is like re-tuning the body. And I think of it as the one, it's my go-to often though. Uh, I think reishi is my favorite of the medicinal mushrooms, but for like re-connecting um, the body to itself. Benign tumors, you know, yeah, I'd still work with the medicinal mushrooms for your immune system to be able to identify them properly and to help to reduce that. But again, it may be something that you have to go to surgery for, or you have to do something else to, this will help to a degree. Um, but I, but I want to just be clear that like, it might be a long road of taking big doses of mushrooms, or you might want to do a mix of therapies, right? So, Mm -hmm. okay great and also another question do we have to take one mushroom every single day or can we we rotate them yeah that's a great question um my recommendation would be uh that you you do uh work with one mushroom fairly consistently to get better results and that might not be every day that might be like five days a week for three to four weeks you know, but just really like hone in, or you might, there might be like a lot of people like to take reishi and cordyceps together because they work with like reishi's grounding cordyceps is energizing, right? So this energized grounded state, reishi cordyceps, really great medicine together. So I might take two of those for a, a four week period. Um, but I also would recommend to people like, wax on, wax off, right? Take your medicines for a period of time, take a break from them after a while. Like don't just take something continually forever. I mean, my, my father takes reishi, he's taken it for 40 years every day. Um, wow. So, you know, you can do that, but I think you get better benefits out of like three to four weeks on, one week off kind of thing. So, mm. Mm -hmm. all right, thank you. And what do you recommend for autoimmune conditions and low thyroid? Um, I'm going to say, again, reishi, I think, is the, the best one that way. But I would really, it's turkey tail, reishi, and chaga, okay. all three of those. So I'd often get somebody on a five mushroom blend. Uh, mm -hmm. The thing about thyroid and something that people maybe don't always understand is that the endocrine system, the entire endocrine system, is almost like a radio channel. It's got multiple stations like the FM dial. Um, but if you're getting static and your, your frequency on one of the channels is not working like the thyroid or the adrenal burnout, they're all connected. They're all interconnected. So the whole endocrine system, when one part of the endocrine system is off, the whole endocrine system is affected by it. So, so just, just know that, that um, working with medicines, 
that support not just your thyroid, that are good for your adrenals, your hypothalamus, your pituitary, your, your you know, this whole thing is going to be useful. Um, I, I'm a big fan of working with um, good quality seaweeds for that. Um, but I'm also a big fan of working with chaga and reishi and turkey tail and the whole five mushroom blend in that way too. So. Great, right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, like a brown seaweed extract is amazing or um, right. bladder rack. Some of those are, are good ones to work with, with the hypothyroid. Okay. Right. Okay. I don't see any more questions. Um, Great. Well, okay. um, just know that uh, we, we've got lots more information on our YouTube channel. Um, something else I'll mention is if you really do want to go deep, um, I am the director of Wild Rose College, so we have an online herbal school, um, and in October, we launch a mushroom course. So it's a big, full, in-depth mushroom course that goes much deeper. Um, you're welcome to check it out at Wild Rose College if you want to go deep and learn much more about mushrooms. I think there's like 70 videos and a full like PDF handout, and so a lot more information there if you, if you want to go, go deeper with that. Great. So thank you so much. It was great presentation. And Thanks for I having think me. I, I'm welcome. I really enjoy myself and I hope everyone enjoy it. And um, okay, so to the front, please to the front. Thank you. Have a great evening, everyone. Right. And may the forest be with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs>